Hello YouTube, I hope you are all well. Welcome to Matt's Country. My name's Matt. Choir to the back. Now, <clears throat> as you can tell, I don't have a studio. This is a kitchen. I don't have a special camera. This is my mobile phone. But I do have an awful lot of information up here which I hope to impart and to help people who are just starting on various journeys. And today's journey I'd like to assist people with is the beginning of their shooting career with an air rifle. Because I do see quite a lot of information that's not always right, quite a lot of misinformation. Um, social media doesn't really help. And I, I realise YouTube's part of that. You know, there's good and there's bad and you've all got your favourite channels, as have I. Uh, I don't have any intention of replicating or copying any of them. This is all about me trying to guide a few people to make the right decisions for them. So today we're going to talk about spring powered air rifles. Still my favourite sort because primarily that's what I grew up with. They are cheaper than PCP in many cases. They last a really, really long time. You can buy a good spring air rifle, you use it for three or four years, then your whole life changes and it goes in the airing cupboard to dry off and then it goes in the loft and it, you know, you oil it once and you don't see it for five years. Been there, done that. And when you get it out, you can put 10 pellets through it and it's back to exactly as it was. That's the beauty of a spring gun. If you buy the right one, you're gonna be a very, very happy person with it for a very, very, very long time. They do have quirks, of course they do, and that's what we're gonna discuss. But the first thing we need to talk about is what makes a spring powered air rifle. I have one here. It is not a cheap one. It's what I would consider to be a mid-range German gun, which would probably instigate all sorts of, oh, I can't afford that, it's not mid-range, mate. <clears throat> this is the Virac HW95. There are many, many, many other guns available for you to choose from. It is an air rifle. That means that the barrel has rifling in it. It's not an airsoft. This is a thing for targets, hunting, plinking. <clears throat> They're quite powerful. I'm in the UK, this is sub 12 foot pound. This one's actually about 10 and a half because that's how I set it, uh, with lots and lots of engineering tweaks, which we are not going into today. We need to talk today about how does this work? Forget this thing, this is a telescopic sight, not interested. Forget the wooden stock, not there today. We're just talking about how the mechanisms of a spring gun work for you. This metal cylinder has a piston in it and the piston's job is to push a massive amount of air through a very small hole really fast. Now I'm going to cock it. This gun is unloaded. I know what I'm doing. Please don't be sad or scared. That's the breaking of it. The spring is still not compressed. That's the spring being compressed. The click noise is the safety catch and the trigger securing it. The barrel is empty. You're never gonna see that, don't know what I'm trying. And the plan is that when this has a pellet put into it, not happening indoors, and the barrel is then re-straightened, when I pull the trigger, don't panic, this is how you do it on a viral, safety is off, I'm putting pressure on this now. I'm gonna pull the trigger and allow it to go slowly. What would normally happen when you fire it is that the piston would rush forward. And because this is always straight at that point, all the air is pushed out of the barrel. Don't blink, you're not in real danger. It's gonna come out the end of that. What on earth does that look like inside? Looks like a bicycle pump is what it looks like, but with a massive spring doing the effort. Guess who's got a bicycle pump? Right, so when you cock the gun, you pull the piston back. It clicks into place. A massive spring is now compressed, a spring so strong that if I was to stand on it, I would not be able to push it to the floor. The moment I pull the trigger, click, the spring pushes the piston forward really fast and it blasts the air out of a tiny little hole called a transfer port. Now the power of the gun is set by how big is the piston around, how far does it travel, because that's the volume of air, and how quickly. How powerful is the spring? Still can't picture it? That's okay, the building trade is here to assist. <clears throat> this is actually scarily similar to the inside of an air rifle. Obviously this would be airtight, it would be completely encased, but when you cock the gun, you're pulling back a piston. Very, very similar to that actually. 
and on the end of this would be the item that holds it open, holds it uh, cocked, and the trigger clicks into it. And then when you pull the trigger at this end, the spring, which is not here, would push this thing forward at alarming speed. All the air comes rushing through and it blasts a pellet through the barrel. So, <clears throat> the physics of that sounds pretty simple really, uh, but it's not pretty simple. If it was dead easy, they would be dead easy to shoot, and they're really not dead easy to shoot. Because, apart from the weight of the gun, when you pull the trigger, the spring which is squeezed has to push the piston that way. But the spring is at the back, and the spring wants to go that way, and your shoulder is there, so you get a little tiny bit of recoil. We're not talking shotgun recoil, we're just talking a little tiny movement. But it's important because it wants to push the piston that way, but there's a pellet blocking the tube. The pellet's airtight, it has to be, you can't let the air through. So for a very short time, we are talking millionths of a second, the piston is squashing the air. Then the pellet says, oh, I better start moving now. And the pellet starts zooming up the barrel. It grips hold of the rifling on the inside of the barrel and starts to spin. Very useful for accuracy. We'll describe that in just a second. And just as the pellet's about to leave the end of the barrel, the piston has finished its travel. And at that point, the whole gun now wants to go that way fractionally. So you get a recoil that way, then you get a recoil that way, and all of that has to happen whilst the poor old pellet and the poor old shooter, that's you, are trying to hold the damn thing on target. <clears throat> Which is not easy. So for goodness sake, don't just think you're going to go out and be a superstar in seconds with one of these. But within hours, days or weeks, yeah, you could be a superstar and it will last you a very, very, very long time. And you can tune them. This has some stuff in it as well that's been slightly tweaked to improve accuracy. Sometimes that brings performance down, which is what I've done with this one, lowered the power, but it's improved it beyond, beyond belief. It's a, it's a very smooth, very capable gun now. So, this is called a moderator known as a silencer, but nothing's ever silenced. It's just going to quiet it down a bit. And yes, they do unscrew on many, many rifles. They need to be on a very long thread, so they are strong enough to be able to use to be co cocking the gun. See how long the thread is on that bad boy. And the silencer moderator has lots of battles inside. Better not put that there. And now you can see how far the pellet travels before it leaves. And in that time, you need to be accurate, you need to be holding your gun. But you don't hold it tight, you just hold it. In this case, on this gun, I hold it quite near the front and with a very gentle hand here. But you need to practice with wherever your gun is most sensitive to accuracy, least sensitive to hold. This one balances about there. And I've found on this one, since I've modified it, that a rest there and a very gentle squeeze here does the job. You have to then hold it the same every time. Genuinely, the gun will shoot in a completely different direction. I don't mean back there. You'd have to be an absolute plum for that. But you will get different accuracy results according to where you hold your gun and what it's rested on. And you do need to practice with it. I won't bother putting the silencer back on now because... We're going to look, having looked at what the pellets look like when they're fresh, we do need to be aware that in this instance, and in almost every instance of the things you're going to be shooting, they're going to be a Diablo style shape. That means it looks a bit like a shuttlecock. Got a big head, then a very narrow waist, and then a skirt. And the skirt is almost always thin, very, very, very thin. And it's so thin that you can squeeze it with your fingers so it's absolutely knackered. No use at all that now. Why is it so thin? Because the air has to blast up it and it has to push that skirt out and make it grip the rifling of the barrel. What's the rifling? Well, if you look up the end of a barrel, not the bad, loud, dangerous end, the broken barrel end, you know, when you're looking through where the pellet is, you can see a, a set of spirals and they're called rifling. That's why it's called a rifle. A shotgun fires shot, 
Is a smoothbore, a rifle has rifling. What's it for? Well, none of these are ever immaculate. They just, they're just never perfect, apart from the fact they're very soft. So as they come out at the end of the barrel, they could go that way, they could go that way, just a little bit, or that way, but if they're spinning, then they go that way, but they spin and they come back round, and every revolution they come back round to the same point they were at before. Rifled barrels are very accurate. Different brands make different levels of accuracy before anybody starts on that. I'm not even gonna say comment about that. Don't even go there. This is for noobs. So, air rifle pellet. This is a Diablo. It has a very thin skirt. It goes into the end of the barrel. You push it with your thumb very gently until it's seated. Then you straighten the gun. From that point, your gun is dangerous and live, and then you're a very, very careful person where you point it. I would always suggest, if you haven't shot your gun for a short time, let's say it's been two, three weeks since you've been out, always stick a couple of pellets through it before you so much as think about any accuracy. Just let the thing come back to life. Let the spring stretch its legs a few times. Let any tiny, tiny imperfections in the amount of oil or grease in the cylinder burn off, <clears throat> because there is a little tiny percentage of dieseling in a spring gun. What's dieseling? Oh my God, he started talking about cars. Back to this. When you are pumping the tires up on your bike, like some kind of frenzied inflation beast, or indeed you're doing a stirrup pump, trying to pump up a PCP gun, or indeed a car tire, it gets hot, that's because every time you compress air, it makes it warm. When you compress air really fast, really quickly and really heavily, it superheats. That is indeed how a diesel car works. Petrol cars have spark plugs, diesel cars have glow plugs to help them heat up once, and from that point onward, it's just the compression of the cylinders that lets the diesel explode. That happens in a spring-powered air rifle. You don't really want it, I mean, okay, HW45 owners are out there shouting, my pistol, it does it every time, it's fine. Some guns are designed to diesel a little tiny bit, but on the whole, guns like that, you don't want it. You can get all the power you need in the United Kingdom, sub 12 foot pound, without any dieseling at all, and that gives you consistency. If you've got some fuel, some oil or grease burning in your gun, it's not good, and you can smell it. That's why you should always, if, you, if the gun's been sat for a while, shoot a couple of pellets into the ground before you go wandering off to, to, to hunt or whatever, and then you have your, your consistent gun. So, in short, spring guns. <clears throat> They're quite reliable. The better money you spend on them, you tend to get better quality. I'm not gonna go into all the different brands because that's for you to research. This is just one of many, many sorts. When you cock the gun and you put the pellet in and you take aim, and you're holding the gun in the way it prefers and you will have practiced and practiced and practiced and you'll know by the time you've had one of these for several months and lots of trips to the uh, air rifle range, when you squeeze that trigger and the gun fires, it will move two different directions and you might get a little bit of that as well and the pellet will fire out, zoom off down the range and hopefully it will turn into something like this. And these are pellets that have been fired in the last few weeks that I've retrieved from various different points of impact, they get squashed. That's because they are imparting, all of that was really squashed, they're imparting all of their power into the target. You don't really want pellets on the floor in your kitchen. You don't really want these things drilling through. You want whatever you're shooting at, to catch the pellet. So YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that. You are very welcome to ask questions. Yes, I will probably make some more videos, though I don't know quite when. I hope you all have a good Christmas. I wish you all safe shooting, accurate shooting, affordable shooting, conscientious shooting. Please do consider what's going on around you. I'm not just talking about backstops and is it safe. I'm talking about what do your neighbors think if you're plinking in the garden. Invite them round is what I'm saying. Don't just expect them to expect it to be fine and dandy. Some people worry about things that we perhaps need to be conscious of. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you all soon. Thanks for being with Matt's Country. Take care and goodbye.